Pastor Helen Ann Brown here again on Kairos Now, a program designed to inform the church and make us all better, better able to fulfill the mandate that we're called in this last day to do. Now I have with me Minister Jalen Cooper Stewart, and we'll be looking at a very big topic. But what I'm going to start with is a background to the topic. And we want to look at strongholds and understand them better. Now, there is a name we use in the world for strongholds, and that is isms. Isms are what the world will call strongholds. So you have heard of racism, for example. You have heard of sexism. These are isms. Minister Stewart, where in the Bible do you recall? You, you might not be able to quote the, the scripture off the top of your head, but where do you recall the, the word strongholds coming up in the Bible? Well, when we look in the New Testament, it speaks about strongholds being pulled down. Mm. That we have the power to pull down strongholds and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that's in 2 Corinthians. Amen. Right. Christians misunderstand strongholds. I've heard people talking about casting out strongholds. You can't cast out strongholds. You cast out devils. You've heard people talking about sending strongholds away. You don't send strongholds away. You tear down strongholds. Now, an ism or a stronghold is a belief system, a system, system of belief that is so rooted in us that it becomes really, really powerful in our minds. Now, whatever we have in our minds govern our behavior. So if I have racism in my mind, if I believe black people not nice and black people wicked and them lazy and them dirty, then definitely I am going to behave out of that belief system. That's what an ism is, or as the Bible calls it, a stronghold. Now, there's a big stronghold in Jamaica, some big ones, more than one, but the one we want to kind of touch today, if we possibly can, based on time, is sexism. I'm going to try to define sexism. Now, there's something you need to understand. Let me go back a little to the whole matter of strongholds, Minister Stewart. A stronghold is like a fortress. A fortress, that's what it means, you know. A fortress is like a strong, strong building that is set up during wartime to protect the, per the persons who live behind it or who fight behind it. Now, that's exactly what a stronghold is. Who, what do you think lives behind strongholds? Well, there are people. People live behind strongholds. People who are, are trying there to defend their territory, um, inhabitants of an area, they live in their strongholds. When I do this program, I like to just pluck somebody up like that and I don't prepare them. And I do it on purpose because these are some of the same questions we ask ourselves every day. But essentially, remember, strongholds live, are, they are fortresses of our minds as individuals. And if enough individual in any society believes it, they become a societal stronghold. So what really lives behind strongholds are demons. Demons are the people, are the beings, not people, the beings who live behind strongholds. Let, let me differentiate something here. A demon is a person. Now by saying a demon is a person, it doesn't mean they're a human being. So often we misunderstand those words. A person means an entity that is alive and has a personality. So demons are persons. And they live behind strongholds. So when we have all these isms in our minds, when we have all these strongholds, these fortifications, behind them eventually the demons take up residence and they begin to fight from behind it. That is why we have to pull down strongholds. That's why we have to cast down strongholds because living behind the strongholds are serious demons. Now, um, any thoughts so far? Yes, I am. I'm thinking that, you know, when when we have strongholds set up around us, we are not necessarily aware that they're there, um, and they come in as thoughts, thoughts that we accept, and over time, because they are built up and accepted by us, we don't see the error in it. We don't easily respond to um, outside thoughts coming in, and that's one of the reasons why I think strongholds are so hard to tear down. Because apart from fortifying the, the thought. It also defends you from incoming 
um, thoughts that would help to remove them. It tries to, but the power of God, and that's why the word of God is so powerful. But so we have this. We understand now what strongholds are. Strongholds, fortification, and isms are all the same. They are meant to house strongly demonic, satanic thoughts that govern our lives and govern society. So let's bring in sexism. It's an ism. It's a stronghold. And you know, as I reflected on this topic, I realized it was far too big to even cover in one program. Because sexism, we all have some degree of sexism in us, you know. Do you know that the thoughts and the powerful thoughts that govern how we think about our own self and our own gender identity is also sexism. So if suppose I believe all women should be beautiful and sexy and the best thing about me is how sexy I can get. That's sexism. It's against your own sexual identity. Suppose there's a man out there and believe all women, all them good for is to look nice and have sex. That's sexism too. So sexism can be a self-held idea or it can be a, a something coming from somebody else towards you. So in every society, you have a number of sexist thoughts that contribute to this stronghold and feed into each other, right? Now, I don't know, we couldn't, it's a huge thing. I am going to probably just select one little part of it or maybe two if possible, based on time. What we find is we find that in companies, for, for example, a lot of time you have heard of the glass ceiling where women can only go so far no more. I'm not so sure if it's so real for Jamaica nowadays, you know, because I hear that we are the biggest, the nation, the highest number of female supervisors and bosses. But truth is, in spite of that, there is still a glass ceiling. Women who surmount that glass ceiling really have to do one of two things. They're either going to have to fight real hard in the flesh or they're going to rely on the Lord, right? Because it's a real sexist thing out there, you know, um, that we have to try and, and batter down. Now, remember, we're dealing with strongholds, we're dealing with sexism, we're dealing with ideas that are strongholds and fortresses and govern us, right? So, there, there, let's look at that boss. Let's look at the workplace quick, quick before we run out of time. And so many things that go on in the workplace. I've spoken to people and they say, for example, you'll have a set of men and women working. And the boss might be a male. He comes up, he speaks to the woman, you know, you guys need to go on such a... And he, he doesn't take on the men much. That's how sexism manifests itself. Or there might be a promotion coming up. The woman might be the very best person for the job, but it's a male boss and he promotes a man ahead of the woman in spite of the fact that in terms of raw talent, she's a better person. I'm sure almost all of us can identify with that, that we've seen men being promoted in spite of the fact that they're not even suitable for the post. It, it's all of this is coming out of sexist ideas, out of sexism in our society. One little element of sexism, it, it, and we're looking at the workplace, is where a lot of bosses tend to promote the male status quo for some reason. And a lot of women feel very offended by it. In fact, I've heard of a lot of crying in the bathroom. <laughs> I've never seen it operate, my dear sister. Um, I have seen it operate. Yeah. Um, where persons are much more qualified, but because you're a woman, um, you're overlooked. Yes. And, and because of the temperament of a woman, sometimes these male bosses will feel that they can overpower them or intimidate exactly. them. And the females might not have the temperament to stand up to them and declare that yes, what you're doing yes, is wrong. Yes, Be because males and females, we do have different temperaments. And God built us that way. And so sometimes the women don't, we don't try to fight back. And it's good. I don't, I don't recommend we try to fight back. As a believer in Jesus Christ, I, I believe we should put it all in God's hands and let him fight for us, right? Because God is a God of justice mm -hmm. and he's always going to fight the, the, on the side of justice, mm -hmm. never on the side of injustice. So we see it in the workplace, a woman in the bath bathroom crying because some male boss has stomped on her like that, eh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you see it manifest in the workplace again that a lot of dirty jobs are given to women. A classic one I heard about a few years ago was in a church context. And there was this woman, a highly anointed woman, and the particular denomination would send her out to work in churches, pastoring. They always selected the worst churches they could find 
in areas where no male wanted to go. And each time she was put there, the Lord came through and the church just grew and the power God fell. You know what would happen next? They moved her, put a male pastor, put her somewhere else that was really way down. And the same thing would happen. Till one time I heard that they placed her in a church that nobody would go because it was almost seen like under a curse. Once I heard there was a pig inside the baptismal pool at some point. I don't know how the story goes, you know. That was the church she was put at. What do you think God did? I think God showed up. Amen. God showed up anyway. And so we can commit ourselves to God. Even in the church, you find a lot of sexism. But if there's one place that should deal with sexism, it's a church. Yes. Because we're called to pull down strongholds. We have to discuss a lot more about strongholds, you know, because the church does not understand strongholds. We fight strongholds by the word of God. That's the only weapon that can pull down strongholds because they're thoughts and ideas. You have to institute God's thoughts and ideas from his word to break it down. That's the only way. You could cry and shout and scream and speak in tongues and, and, and command it to flee all you want. That's what you do to the persons living behind the stronghold. That is the demons. But you can't do that to the stronghold itself. And if you want to get at the demons, you have to tear down the strongholds. That is why the teaching of the word of God is so critical. The church of God needs a more in-depth understanding in its last day to make that final thrust forward as Jamaica plays its role in the global community, not only naturally, but spiritually. We're going to stop here. And if you Google Kairos Network Jamaica, We'll be continuing discussions like this one and others. I am Pastor Helen Ann Brown. It's always my pleasure to be here. I am delighted to teach the body of Christ, to thrust us all forward. I want to thank my guest, Minister Jalen Cooper Stewart. And you know, these people have plucked them out like that. And I do it on purpose too, because they come not knowing what I'm going to cover so they can't prepare. And that's good because they're going to ask questions that you'll ask and take perspectives that you'll take. And that is just wonderful. Looking forward to the rest of my life and the rest of yours. I know we're going to do valiantly as a nation and as a church in the mighty name of Jesus. God, bless the church in Jamaica. Create a mighty teaching instrument. Send us global, Lord. We are ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Everything that blinds me The work of the enemy Because Jesus makes me free Everything that rides